In tonight's Health Watch, could your smartphone be causing you or your children to grow horns? Sounds absurd, but it's a serious question being posed. It's really scary. It's a, it's a big find. It's a big sign. It tells us that we're changing. I mean, we're changing the physical aspects of human beings. It only takes a few minutes of taping on the street to see dozens of people in that familiar 21st century position, head forward, craning to see what's on their phones. When you realize that the human head weighs about 10 pounds and for every inch it tilts forward, you double the pressure on your spine, pretty soon your neck is straining against a 20 or 30 pound weight. Well, it's kind of surprising that our bodies are being impacted by today's technology. You've heard of other ailments like text neck and texting thumb. Now we can add these horn-like structures to the list. Now, the researchers who discovered these growths are referring to them as prominent exostosis emanating from the external occipital protuberances. Those are just fancy scientific words meaning that there's a bone spur found at the base of the skull. It does look sort of like a horn, but actually this is a bone spur near the base of the skull. A new study by Australian researchers say they found bone spurs. Researchers in Australia examined hundreds of x-rays and found that roughly 40% of people 18 to 30 years old who use their phones more than four and a half hours a day develop the growth. The likely cause? All that hunching over, sending texts and checking social media. There's a nickname for the generation born between 1995 and 2012. iGen, as in iPhones and iPads. They don't know a life without smartphones. How many people have a phone? Everybody. How many people use the phone, like, say, more than two hours a day? More than five hours a day? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yes. On average, teens touch their phones 80 times a day. No surprise to Meredith Cohen and her friends at the Marin School outside San Francisco. Is there anything that's happening that you're feeling like you have to do it all the time? Yeah. Making sure I look at all my Instagram feed and Snapchat stories. Yeah. Also, being up to date, like on Netflix oh, yeah. and YouTube. Yeah. Pulling through their smartphones every day, but a new study shows it may be changing your bodies. A study of 1,200 people conducted by researchers at the University of the Sunshine Coast found 41% of participants aged between 18 and 30 had developed a bony lump on the back of their skull. We suspect that the reason for this bone spur formation is because they carry their head forward, but not just carrying their head forward, they carry their head forward for a long period of time. Now, what's most concerning about the findings is the horn-like spurs typically don't present until far later in adulthood. This is fascinating. Dr. David Shahar joins me now from the Sunshine Coast. Doctor, thanks for your time. Is there any other explanation for why young people are getting these bone spurs? It's, um, it's hard to actually think of others because uh, you got to go back uh, and ask yourself what happened over the last 10 years? Uh, what changed over the last 10 years to bring about this type of phenomenon? And uh, I think it's important to stress that uh, it is not only the positioning of the head where the head is being carried po uh, forward or suspended forward. It is also the, uh, the, the sustained nature of this activity when people are engaged in, um, in, um, in this forward head protraction for prolonged periods of time. Pick up your phone to do something specific and then be distracted by something entirely different than five, ten minutes goes by and you realize that you've wasted your time being entirely unproductive. It's similar to taking a trip to the grocery store to pick up necessities like eggs and milk only to walk away with items you have no need for. So why exactly are our phones so captivated? And why do we have this impulse to always check them? The most important apps on our phones, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, are designed to capture and hold our attention for as long as possible. The longer they can do this, the more they can sell ads and the greater their profits. Just to put it in perspective, Facebook as a company is valued at over $400 billion. We must realize that there are thousands of engineers software developers and behavioral experts on the other side whose job it is to keep us hooked. In other words, the addictive nature of these services is not accidental, it's by design. 
and our minds are simply not evolved to handle persuasive stimulus to this capacity. Are we growing horns because of cell phones? New research suggests that hunching over your phone could produce horn-like growths at the back of the skull, just above the neck. These x-rays show those protruding bone spurs. What is causing this? If you keep your neck really bent forward for an extended period of time, then you end up stretching some of the ligaments in the back and it protrudes these cervical bones. If you keep doing that without correcting your posture in the long run, you're going to hurt your discs and your neck muscles causing long-term neck issues. It's been known for many years that cell phone use can cause poor posture and neck and back pain and headaches. But the growth of horns, that's something new, according to researchers in Australia. Dr. Saad Chaudhary, a spine surgeon at New York's Mount Sinai Hospital, showed me some simple exercises you can do. 10 seconds, and you hold it 10 seconds here on one 10 side? 10 seconds on each side, and you would hold that. And then 10, 10 seconds on this there. side. And then, and then 10, 10 seconds, seconds up. Back. And as you get better doing it, you can lace your fingers across the back and provide yourself with some resistance. Also, always keep your phone at eye level. Don't look down. You're keeping your shoulders straight. Your lower back is in good alignment. So this is helping all that. And I think if you do that on a regular basis and remind yourself, I think those things will go a long way in preventing those horns. We know that engagement with social media and our cell phones releases a chemical called dopamine. That's why when you get a text, it feels good. Right? So, you know, we've all had it where you're feeling a little bit down or feeling a bit lonely. And so you send out 10 texts to 10 friends, you know, hi, 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 hi. Because <laughs> it feels good when you get a response, right? Right? It's why we count the likes. It's why we go back 10 times to see if, and if it's going, if our, my Instagram is growing slower, I would, I, I, did I do something wrong? Do they not like me anymore, right? The, the trauma for young kids to be unfriended, right? Because we know when you get it, you get a hit of dopamine, which feels good. It's why we like it, it's why we keep going back to it. Dopamine is the exact same chemical that makes us feel good when we smoke, when we drink, and when we gamble. In other words, it's highly, highly addictive, right? We have age restrictions on smoking, gambling, and uh, alcohol, and we have no age restrictions on social media and cell phones, which is the equivalent of opening up the liquor cabinet and saying to our teenagers, hey, by the way, this adolescence thing, if it gets you down. <laughs> but that's basically what's happening. That's basically what's happening. So lawmakers right? today in the Senate met with lawyers from Google, Facebook, and Twitter to talk about what they're doing to stop the spread of violent extremism on their platform. And that's been a huge problem on their platform for the last year. How do you define violent content. We ban designated foreign terrorist organizations from using our platform, as well as incitement to violence, glorification of violence, encouragement to violence, and uh, of course, hate speech. There is a lot of things that they can do that they can say out loud they're doing. For example, Facebook said they're devoting a lot more people to this to try to curtail things like ISIS, white nationalist violence, and they say there are over 350 people working in that specific group now, and they're working to add more money to it generally. But places like YouTube and, and Google they don't really have data for this. In fact, they're not really talking about it. Today, Senator John Thune asked them basically, what are you guys doing to stop radicalization on your platform? And YouTube said that the stuff that leads you down that rabbit hole is down 50% since January. But they didn't say 50% of what? Like, we don't know what that means. It's not real numbers. We don't know what's in that algorithm. There's no transparency whatsoever to show what's actually going on here. And that's Google and Apple. YouTube has again shuffled about its hate speech and discrimination policy. This follows a sidestep, a moonwalk, two somersaults and a backflip. Today we're taking another step in our hate speech policy by specifically prohibiting videos, alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination, segregation or exclusion based on qualities like age, gender, race, caste, religion, sexual orientation or veteran status. If that was any more vague, it might as well have been fog, mist or a cloud perhaps. It's really that vague. Videos alleging a group is superior. Gosh, according to that statement, the hammer of politically correct judgment is about to fall on Peter. The news of an antitrust investigation loomed over this year's Apple Worldwide Developers Conference. Federal antitrust regulators, according to CBS News, are pursuing investigations into Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. I'm kind of 
concern like everybody are people becoming monopolistic and reducing competition. David Neal works in the tech industry and is attending this year's WWDC. He believes the government should keep a watchful eye for bad practices, but not necessarily break up big tech. We should look at times where maybe they're stifling the market and killing competition. On the other hand, if if companies are innovating and doing new things, we have to be very careful not to stifle that. We have to coordinate efforts across the UN system to identify, prevent and confront hate speech. The United Nations says hate speech has gained a foothold and is spreading like wildfire. But the UN boss believes it's on notice, putting in place a strategy he hopes will get buy-in from all member states. In both liberal democracies and authoritarian regimes, some political leaders are bringing the eight-fold ideas and language of these groups into the mainstream, normalizing them, coarsening the public discourse and weakening the social fabric. Hate speech is in itself an attack on tolerance, inclusion, diversity, and the very essence of our human rights norms and principles. More broadly, it undermines social cohesion, erodes shared values, and can lay the foundation for violence, setting back the cause of peace, stability, sustainable development, and the fulfillment of human rights for all. Guterres laid out two overriding objectives for the plan. First, to enhance efforts to address the root causes of hate speech that include violence, marginalization, discrimination, poverty, and a lack of education, among others, aspects that the current 2030 development agenda seek to address. But it does raise an interesting point. Who the hell are YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter? Are they platforms for people to chat on, express themselves? Or are they censors, moral police, responsible for how and what you say? Neither, apparently. If they start enforcing their own policies, no matter how vaguely, we'll stop hearing about the best country in the world, the freest country in the world, the greatest country in the world. He says, Daily Wire fellas, I'm proud of my Mexican ancestry, but uh -huh. also am proud of my American nationality. How do I balance mm. these two things? Super simple. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo because you uh, are proud of your Mexican heritage. Believe that it is Mexico's Independence Day because you have American nationality. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's be honest. Our ah, YouTube overlords didn't update their rules to take down America is great videos. But given that the rules are now so ambiguous they can be used to take down anything, what chance do even remotely political or controversial videos stand? Or, dare I say it, anything anti-establishment? Today we learned that Twitter and Facebook are ramping up efforts to clamp down on what they say is offensive or hateful content. But who gets to decide what's hateful or offensive? That in a corporate state, such as the one in which we live here, um, where corporations and the government you know, regularly concentrate to uh, you know, collect their power, censorship by corporations isn't so different than censorship by the government, is it? Because in the case, of, fa in the case of Facebook, let's just talk about that for a second. They're in an outright partnership with the Atlantic Council, which is funded by NATO. It's a DC think tank. Some of the most prominent think tanks in the world are partnering with these so-called private companies. So are we that, even talking right. about the First Amendment? I feel like we might be. Well, well but, but let, let's go back. The antecedent aspect about this, you know, if you look back at how DARPA and NQTEL and other particular right. uh, forces, platforms were responsible for this. But let me look, at, let, let me give you a new idea. Let's look at this almost like a utility. By virtue of the fact, Michelle, that let's say 80%, 90% of the people on the planet use these platforms. Mm. I don't think this is some mom and pop organization. What if you were on your phone, whatever your carrier, and you said something and all of a sudden your phone dropped? And you call back again, and you repeated it at a phone call. And you found out that Sprint or Verizon, whoever it was, found that your statement was hateful or violated its terms. You would say, wait a minute, you're a phone carrier. You're not, you're not endorsing what I'm saying. This is what, we have to treat these almost as though they're a utility. Hmm. Businesses, well, this show, everybody, are they're using these platforms. You gotta get rid of this ridiculous model that, they're a, that Mark Zuckerberg is just some guy who owns this little diner. 
in, uh, in Collinsville, Illinois, and he's just a businessman. And if you don't like Facebook, go someplace else. Where? If you don't right. like Google, go someplace where. Th 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 this model has to change immediately. Right.